Hello. Uh, if you're familiar with Japanese authors, uh, you may have heard of Genichiro Tarizaki, who is, well, a pretty famous Japanese author. He was born in, I believe, Oh, 1886 in Tokyo, and he died in 1965 in Kanagawa. So, um, and, well, he made several books which are pretty famous, like um, uh, Sisters Makyoka, I believe that's the name in English, um, or maybe some preferred nettles. I had to cut it right there because I forgot the name of the book. But anyway, I have not read any of his books. Um, instead, I read this, which is called uh, In Praise of the Shadows. Uh, it's, it's not like a book, it's like really, really thin. And it's more like his thoughts about shadows. Um, I mean, not the sonic one, but... That was bad, okay. <laughs> but he talks about how shadows like kind of permeate the entire like foundation of culture and architecture and art uh, in Japan, which is like something I kind of never talk, uh, never thought about, because like, well. As clearly, I'm not Asian, <laughs> and for someone who lives in like not uh, an Asian country or anything, I just like I don't know. I I just always thought that like everyone lived in the dark, in kinda the dark, before the light bulb was invented, and. Then everything got lighter when it was invented. Like, uh, of course, we have um, candles and such, but it do doesn't light up the, the place with like uh, electrical lightning. But, oh, anyway, he talks a lot about um, why the shadows are not just. Uh, there because like they had no no way of I guess producing a better light but as in you choose the shadows because of an artistic statement I guess and you want to make things um, be that way he talks a lot about like how Japanese architecture was like made so you're like not afraid how the shadows and the women used to like work always at home and they were like the ones that were in the shadow the most so um, back then like uh, before he wrote this book he wrote this book at the beginning 1933 or 20 20 something i don't know something like that and before that uh, v v many many years ago, women used to wear like plain, more plain kimonos, like uh, gray ones, uh, dark blue ones, and they wouldn't like stand out too much. Like when they put a kimono to go to to buy stuff or just to be at home, they would like wear those kind of kimonos, and because they, they kind of just blended with the shadows anyway so there was like no point that using like a colorful kimono they, those were like reserved for maybe special occasions or something like that and as like <clears throat> he talks about as like progress happens and we get in, in Japan after the, the Meiji era they get a lot of you know Inventions from from uh, European countries and the uh, Americas and everything, so they kind of get 
like overwhelmed with all those all the stuff and they kind of lose in his opinion um some of the roots that were in japanese society and the things that bother him the most uh are the, the shadow stuff because he talks about like going to the theater to watch um either no or kabuki which are like the two most famous I guess, um, forms of theater in Japan, which is uh, the no theater. It's, uh, I guess, um, it differs mostly from Kabuki because they wear masks. Like the man, uh, in both of them, the man plays all the roles, like traditionally at least. Nowadays, like women can, can also work there but back then only men could do it so <clears throat> the men will play all all the parts like the man the male ones and the female ones so you know when he, they were representing a female the man will use some kind of mask which the, the no masks got pretty pretty famous uh it was a hit it looks pretty <laughs> pretty good it's like uh, very theatrical stuff and while in Kabuki they were, were like wear heavy heavy makeup that you probably saw like those wide faces makeup and uh, the men will also play the females <laughs> and he talks about how uh, these days when he wrote the story in 1930 I believe uh, it was all in Kabuki, it was all electrical lighting in the the theaters. So when you look at the men who are, who are supposed to be women, uh, because of such strong lighting, you cannot see. Uh, no, you can see very well all their imperfections, and you cannot like you cannot buy the the lie that is that he is actually a woman. And I know that, and he talks. Uh, I don't. I don't think he thinks that the point is to be like all that, um, like a hundred percent convincing. Because no one's gonna be a hundred percent convinced that it is a woman, because everyone knows that only the man work there. But anyway, he he talks about uh, when, for example, no, um, they use old lining with candles and stuff and so because of this lining you can you cannot see the strong features of men so when they act it's more believable and it's more beautiful to him and they can like he can really see the art in the no theater and he cannot see the art not exactly the art, but he doesn't think it's as beautiful in Kabuki. He doesn't appreciate Kabuki all that much. And the books about that, essentially like the differences between electrical lighting and the old way of lighting and how that affects like pretty much everything in Japanese society. According to him, it affects the beauty in everything. And I don't know, it just... It's just a really interesting um, study, I guess. It's like unlike any, anything I've ever seen. I've never seen anything on this topic. And it's not like I've ever thought about it. So I think for, especially for us that are, I don't know, from America, from, from Europe, from, if you're not from an Asian country, like you get like a totally different perspective on this stuff and, and you get like the perspective of like a Japanese person talking about like the changes that Japanese uh, that Japan is like going to this period like he talks about the struggles of them losing their essence and becoming like I don't know the United States or anything like that of course, I don't agree with everything that is being presented here. 
uh, but it's a very interesting to to see this perspective in it and I never thought that this book would be that interesting <laughs> so you should really read it if you're interested in doing cheetah things like